Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I hope all of you are doing well and doing great. A very warm welcome from Adreka. Really, we are going to talk about one of the cloud, which is uh, Microsoft Cloud, which is named as Azure. And in that specifically, we are going to talk about uh, Azure Virtual Machine. Before we start with anything, let me introduce myself. My name is Deepak. I have 15 plus years of experience in this field, and I have uh, developed and deployed certain solutions. Along with that, I have certain patents on my name. So uh, let's get started. Yeah, so like I said, today our goal is to talk about uh, Azure Virtual Machine tutorial. Why we should use Azure Virtual Machine? What is Azure Virtual Machine? Some of the key features and its architecture and a small demonstration we are going to have. And let's get started. So now we're going to talk about why Azure VM. Before that, uh, let me explain you about VM. VM basically stands for Virtual Machine. So what is a Virtual Machine? Virtual Machine is basically simulation of your computer. Now, for example, how we were using virtual machine in our normal life, for example, we have to, let's say, create an environment where we need multiple operating system. Like, I want to have Windows Server 2016 and Windows Server 2019, and I want to run those operating systems in parallel. What is the first thought which will come into your mind that we can have three, uh, like two different computers with Windows Server 2016 and Windows Server 2019, but I don't have that budget and, and again i don't want to spend on that hardware and all what you can do is you can basically use virtual machine wherein on the uh, on your base operating system which is like for example i'm using windows 10 i can just uh, install two virtual machines i can use different softwares like vmware um, you know hyper v there's so many uh, softwares available hyper v is basically the proprietary of microsoft that they provide at free of cost so uh, you can use that and you can basically uh, you know using it you basically can create the virtual machine so that's why virtual machine is nothing that it is just the simulation of your computer now in this case if you basically talk about uh, in the case of azure what exactly is different in the case of azure uh, one of the biggest thing or biggest uh, advantage i would say that now you can create the virtual machine on the directly on the cloud itself because if i'm going to create a virtual machine on my uh, you know system on my uh, local operating system what will happen uh, it will require a lot of space let's say i want to create five operating system in parallel so I want to have Kali Linux, I want to have Ubuntu, I want to have Red Hat, I want to have Windows Server 2016, I want to have Windows Server 2019. Again, you can create so many you know, virtual machines, but now you have to make sure that you have enough space on your, uh, you know, on your site, like on your uh, system. If you don't have enough space, then you will not be able to create those many operating systems, which is going to create, again, a lot of issues. So as your virtual machine gives you an advantage that you can use pay as you go feature. So as per your requirement, you can build and you can basically uh, create the virtual machine. And once the work is done, you can basically, you know, delete them all. So it basically have a paper unit. So it's like a unit of electricity. Whatever you're going to consume, you're going to be charged for it. It's not like that you're not going to be charged unethically. It's going to be very transparent. Billing, whatever you're going to consume, you're going to be charged for it. So now why is your VM? As your VM gives you a lot of advantages, like one of the biggest advantages is that the cost saving. It's not uh, like that you have to purchase the hardware, so many computers, so many desktops, so many servers. You can just create the virtual machine on the cloud and delete it once the work is done. So there is no dedicated cost required, no maintenance and other things needs to be done. Next one basically is your boosted, uh, you know, scalability. So in this case, if you want to increase the resources of your virtual machine, you want to increase the RAM, hard drive, you can basically scale up or scale down the resources as per your requirement. Plus you can have a learning feature as well. It supports alerting. For example, if my CPU utilization is going to go beyond 70%, 80%, likewise, I can define the customization as conditions and based on it, it's going to, you know, alert me for that. Next one is a more control. You're going to have much more control uh, because you can basically define the policies, define the rule, and you're going to have the entire central control of it. And the last one is easy diagnostics, which basically means that uh, if you want to see that, like uh, what other people have logged in, what happened to the account, the virtual machine state is up or not. So if you want to have um, the entire uh, visibility on the logs as well, you can do it. Even you can integrate with different tools as well, like Splunk, SolarWinds for the monitoring, and it supports all that integration. Clear? Now, what is Azure VM? What is Azure VM? Azure VM basically uh, means Azure Virtual Machine. This is one of the several type of on-demand scalable computing resources that Azure offers. So typically, if I had to say, you can choose a VM when you need, and you are going to have uh, you know central control over the cloud computing environment, then the other choices offer, and then you can delete it once your work is done. Now, if I talk about some of the key features of Azure Virtual Machine, so one of the biggest feature about is that you know isolation. So 
it's like a multi tenant environment but your uh, virtual machine your environment your access is going to be isolated with other people plus you can have internet uh, uh, communication once i'm going to create a virtual machine it's going to automatically create a public ip address so you are going to have uh, you know private to public ip address mapping and you can use it vm directly over the internet i'm going to show you with a small particle as well so third is vnc virtual network connectivity where if i want to basically um, you know create a different virtual networks you know uh, virtual network interface cards and all it basically supports that as well next is on premise connectivity which basically means that uh, if i want to uh, have a connectivity of my virtual machine from the cloud environment on my local side it basically supports that as well and uh, next one is azure resource communications if you want to have connectivity between different resource groups different subscription it, it's going to have that as well what that is i'm going to show you practically in a bit and then is the routing some people think that again again azure is a public platform um, this is uh, managed by the azure you cannot create the ips and all so if you want to create your custom routes if you want to have the customized routing everything it supports that as well and the traffic filtering which basically is a firewall you can basically create the inbound and outbound routes. yeah now let's take a look at structure learning at Eureka. So if you are interested to uh, uh, dive in more detail wherein you want to, uh, you know, learn more about all the components about the course uh, things and everything. This is the structure learning the way we basically focus. So in the first class, you're going to learn about what is the, uh, you know, Azure solution uh, different components of it. And you're going to, uh, you know, uh, get perspective hands on on that in the first class. After that, you are going to, you know, learn about you know what is Azure virtual machine the different type of um, you know drives you can have uh, the networking in detail you're going to learn about it with the hands-on in the third class you're going to learn about Azure virtual machine scale set Azure availability zones and the hands-on in the fourth class you're going to learn about Azure application services and its feature with a perspective hands-on in the fifth class you're going to learn about advanced Azure hybrid connectivity and site recovery with a perspective hands-on on it in a sixth class, we're going to learn about Azure storage solution and design patterns with the hands-on. Then in the seventh class, we're going to learn about AKS, which is Azure Kubernetes Services, Docker, everything with the hands-on. Then in the eighth class, we're going to learn about Azure Active Directory and role-based access control with the hands-on on it. And in the ninth class, you're going to learn about Azure monitoring and inside services, what are different components of, uh, components of it with a perspective hands-on and in the last class we're going to learn about Azure design migration how you can migrate the data from your on-premise to the cloud or from cloud to on-premise and then at the end you're going to become a superhero who is going to have a cape like this so that's something you're going to you know learn now uh, let's basically take a look at Azure VM architecture so what are the main components of Azure VM architecture if I talk about it one is a fabric controller with the help of which you can basically you know decide that like uh, you want to use normal hard drive you want to use standard hard drive you want to use SSD or you want to use premium SSD based on that the cost is going to be there you can enable alerting uh, basically like I said if the CPU utilization is going to go beyond that level it's going to notify you again there's going to be you know perspective cost for it so that's something you're going to uh, you know learn during that next is a patch management where you can uh, schedule the patches wherein uh, the patches are going to be applied automatically and you can create a partitions like these. likewise you can have a different different partitions likewise you can basically create isolation uh, of different environment with each other wherein the all the different components of the environment are going to work independently next is your compute stamps which basically means that you can decide different type of storage type in azure you have four type of storage type basically blob file queue table you can just choose which storage type you want to use and the other vm components basically like for monitoring for uh, alerting and all this kind of stuff this is the normal architecture of any azure vm uh, which basically you know looks like so when you're going to create a virtual machine in order to create a virtual machine you are going to create a resource group resource group basically is going to be a placeholder uh, wherein your all the related components are going to be stored and i'm going to show you practically as well so in the resource group i can have let's say my network configuration my virtual machine so any of the virtual machine i'm going to uh, create in that resource group i can use that same network configuration so in the uh, you know resource group you're going to basically create your virtual machine wherein you're going to have your virtual network you can define your own subnet if you don't want to define it's going to define automatically i'm going to show you practically as well so uh, once that virtual machine is going to be you know created it will require the cpu the hard drive so you can basically decide that which specific hard drive you want to use uh, you want to use ssd you want to use normal hard drive depending on that you have to basically pay the cost 
and your uh, logs are going to be stored in log storage account. You can configure the uh, basically storage services wherein the logs are going to be stored. And uh, this is again a network security gateway, which is basically like a firewall. You can define the rule for incoming and outgoing traffic. And uh, since this virtual machine is going to be created at uh, you know in the internal environment of uh, cloud, so they are going to provide you internal to external mapping. So for your virtual machine, there is going to be a public IP address, which is going to be connected with the internet, which is going to be resolved through you know DNS, and your VM will be able to uh, you know it's it's going to be available on the internet and the public world. I'm going to show you with a small practical demonstration as well. Oh okay, yes, let's just jump on to the small demonstration here. So this is my uh, Azure account that I have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a virtual machine here. Now, in order to create a virtual machine, like I said, virtual machine is going to be created into my resource group. So let's say right now I have nothing on my side, so I can create a resource group here. I can give it a name as Deepak. So here my resource group is created. Let's say I want to create a virtual machine of Windows Server 2019. So here I'm going to create a Windows Server 2019 uh, virtual machine. It's going to ask me in which resource group I want to store. Let me say I want to store in a debug resource group. And uh, let's say my virtual machine name I'm giving is debug VM. That's the name I'm giving to my virtual machine. I'm keeping in this region. You can uh, change the region like uh, ideally you can keep it India being in the same region, but I'm keeping the default one. Here I'm going to provide the username and password, which is going to be required to access my uh, you know virtual machine. So let's say my username I'm keeping is my name only deeper, and password I'm using a standard one that I use. Now here in this case, it's basically uh, you know by default RDB port is allowed. If you want, you can allow all the other ports if you want. But otherwise. Uh, you should at least make sure that RDB port is enabled so that you can access it. Now you are going to have different type of disks, like you can use premium SSD, standard SSD. Depending on that, the cost is going to be uh, you know different. Let's say I want to use uh, you know standard SSD drive. In the networking, if you want to create your own network, virtual network, it's uh, you can you know create your own. Otherwise, it's going to create it automatically. So uh, uh, here I'm going to create a virtual machine. So here in this case, uh, you know, in the case of Azure, it's going to show you the cost as well. For example, if I'm going to create this, I'm going to be charged this much, basically, you know, like, like nine rupees and seventy-seven pesa for every hour. Let's create it out. You know that generally, if you're going to create a virtual machine or you're going to create an, oper an install operating system, it takes like forty-five to fifty minutes, right? In this case, it will be created in less than five minutes only. So it's almost done. Now you can see here all the like IP address, public IP address, virtual network, each and everything is getting created automatically. Here we go. Now in this case, basically the virtual machine is created. Uh, if I'm going to go to my virtual machine, it's going to be there into my account. Now this is a virtual machine. Now, in this case, if I want to connect to virtual machine, I can simply download this as a RDB file. Let's say I want to give access of this virtual machine to someone else. I can download the RDB file and I can give it to that person and it's going to be available directly. Now I can just, uh, you know, connect to the virtual machine automatically here. So let's give it the username and password that I, uh, you know, use to create it. So username, if you remember, I kept my name and the password that I used. Here we go. Now, basically, that's my uh, you know virtual machine which is being created. So now, you know, like even though I'm on my local machine which has Windows 10, uh, this is a virtual machine. It's going to have basically Windows Server 2019 that I have created. It's going to have the same name. Now, uh, I have not de uh, defined the network configuration. This is the public IP, so uh, you know I can directly connect on the public uh, network automatically. 
Now, if, you, if I show you the version of it, Now you will be able to see on this machine that I have created, it's Windows Server 2019. The name which I gave was Deepak VM. So that's why it is using that name. I can have like, likewise multiple virtual machine in my environment. So it's basically have the same amount of hard drive memory that I have used. So, and again, it's going to be charged you like uh, nine rupees, something pesa that we have seen every hour, you're going to be charged for this. So let's say I want to, uh, you know, like delete this resource group out. So if I go to my resource group, that I have created deeper in this, you will be able to see this virtual machine, you know, all the network configuration. Now let's say my work is done and I don't want to be charged. Remember one thing, even though if you're not using it, you're still going to be charged for this. So let's say your work is done and uh, you don't want to this, uh, you, you don't want to use this virtual machine anymore. You can just uh, delete the entire resource group out so that you should not get billed and uh, you're not going to be charged. So you just have to select this uh, resource group and it's going to be deleted in a moment. As you can see, it's in progress. So, like I said, it's basically uh, you know it's a pay-as-you-go service. So, whatever you are going to basically con uh, you know consume, you are going to be charged for it. Apart from that, uh, it's not going to charge you anything. So, like a unit of electricity, whatever the units basically that you consume, you are going to be charged for it. So, let's say I want to refresh this. It's going to take a little while. It's going to be in a progress. And it's going to be deleted in the moment. Clear? So I hope that you have really enjoyed it and you have learned a lot and it was very much beneficial for you. We are going to meet in future. Thank you and have a great day ahead. Bye bye.